Hello everyone. Three days after the full moon, we have a double Kazemi. The sun is conjunct Saturn and Mercury on the 28th of February. Let's take a look at the chart. Uh, there's a lot that we can unpack uh, in it. The London time for the exact uh, Mercury-Saturn conjunction is on February the 28th at 15.08 and uh, there's there's there are a couple of uh, uh, important things i don't know how to uh get rid of this i hold on a second i hate this in zoom that it won't go away this bar and it actually blocks your our view but okay let's hope it's going away anyhow this is it um and uh, we are going to look at the, the highlights of the london chart but let's take a look at the daily travels first uh, because the sun is exactly one degree per day at the moment. So when you do primary directions, uh, it is going to be valid for now. Because uh, if uh, if someone is born around this, this time of the year, the sun is exactly one degree per day. And that's the, the key for uh, primary or, or symbolic uh, directions. And Mercury is almost double fast faster than the sun it's uh it travels one degree 52 and saturn is only seven minutes of an arc seven minutes and 19 seconds so of course that is the the uh, uh slowest but at the moment saturn is also quite uh, faster than average and um, so this is a kazemi placement by uh, all means we are going to look take a look at the exact degrees but let's take a look at the london chart just to see what the highlights are Leo is rising, so the eighth house Sun Saturn Mercury uh, conjunction is very important because um, because the Sun is the chart ruler, and the eighth house, of course, is the house of house of deaths, and so not just death and uh, and um, esoteric things and occult things, but also uh, karmic deaths, for instance. On the mid heaven, you have Aries, drastically altered outward circumstances. That is what's happening in the in the world. The Venus-Mars conjunction, which was very tight uh, at the new moon, is now separating, obviously, because Venus is faster than Mars, but both are on the descendant, and the descendant symbolizes either your spouse, your partner, or, or your open enemies. Uh, the vertex is on Ceres, and that is exactly what you see in Europe. Uh, in the European Union, the Cretan idiots want to do away with agriculture, and they are killing uh, practically killing agric agriculture with stupid laws and rules and regulations and all kinds of stuff. And soon we won't have food. That's the problem that the idiots, uh, the uh, the green idiots don't understand that, okay, you can you can do about this much with, with a uh, farmer, but after, after you kill the farmer, and this is exactly what happened in the Soviet Union, when they killed the kulavs, uh, uh, the, uh, the the peasants who were diligent and hardworking and smart and and were able to produce a lot, and they simply simply killed them or put them in prison, <laughs> and, and of course the result was famine all uh, across the board. So this is what you want to achieve. You are at the, on your best route. The problem is that uh, the Cretan European Union, the leaders, are not even dealing with it. Uh, it's it's an interest. It, we do live in interesting times, as the in the biggest Chinese curse. So yes, uh, and then uh, there's an interesting structure with Jupiter, Uranus, and and the uh, dark moon. But we are going to look at it in the evening uh, when uh, uh, when the um, Saturn Sun portion will be exact, and then uh, the um, West, the the, uh, the um, um, asteroid related past Athena conjunction is they are still traveling together. The moon is on the IC, and the Juno black moon Lilith is already separating, but still very tight. So those are the highlights. And if you can take a look, you can see that all three Liliths are very very prominent. Asteroid Lilith revolt against injustice is with the wisdom asteroid. Uh, the dark moon Lilith is leaving Jupiter and moving towards uh, Uranus, combining the two. Uranus is freedom and Jupiter is luck. And, and uh, this Lilith, dark moon Lilith, is the acceptance of the curse. Uh, and then the black moon Lilith is truth and, and knowledge and, and, and uh, the acceptance of, of uh, 
uh, certain things that I need to do. So it's quite, uh, they are quite prominent. I always say that the three astrological leads are what this, they, they, they represent what I descri describe uh, the will. Hold on one second, what did I do here? One, oh yes, here it is. We do have a, a wide harmony triangle and this is where I show you the, the degrees. As you can see, very often the um, when you do the chart, you will see configurations, but you always need to do the math whether or not they really are going to close because there's a difference between what orb you are using for, uh, for, for instance, the trine and the Ceres Jupiter trine is very, very wide, but applying so we can accept it. Uh, and this triangle is re really not closing too well because the orbs are, are a little bit big. If you take a look at the uh, Sun, Saturn, Mercury, at its apex, that's the peak. And Ceres is uh, on the one side of the orb and, and uh, Jupiter is on the other side of the orb. And what is really wide is this, the, the Jupiter Ceres trine. What is but at the same time very tight is the Mars Jupiter square. This is a fixed square, and Mars Jupiter is the champion combination. So when you have it in a conjunction or a trine or even a sextile, then you love sports, then you want to achieve, then you want to win, either in sports or in anything else. It's a really, really beautiful uh, thing to have because it gives you a lot of drive and stamina. The problem is th that this is a square and this is a, a, a very tight fixed square. And so it's a debilitating energy. It's uh, the uh, it's those sportsmen who are always second or third. They never win, no matter what they do. They they are great when they are only practicing, or when the uh, the match doesn't have a real um, issue. But when it's an Olympic champion match, then they come in second or third. Uh, so that is a, a stalling energy at the moment. Let's take a look at the transcendental celestial objects. Uh, as you can see in this chart, we only have asteroids, which uh, you know the the personal karmic level, and uh, one single uh, TNO or centaur in in karmic astrology. All TNOs, SDOs, ETNOs, and centaurs are named or labeled as centaurs, and they all are linked to our karmic wounds. And they all are linked to either uh, super and uh, ingenious um, traits or phobias and 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 scares uh, and and, uh, and uh, so that's why we uh, use uh, the word centaur for every one of them. On uh, the Sun, Saturn, Mercury, you have two underworldly energies. Eurydice, who is the wife of Ophel's, uh, uh, she's in the underworld and she, she dies and, and the husband wants to take her wife up to the, the, she wants to rescue her from the underworld, but he's unable to, she, she remains there. And Requiem is, of course, uh, the most uh, uh, expressing grief. And then on Mars, you have Ambrosia. And yes, Ambrosia is uh, the, the food of gods. And soon this is what we will have, what we are going to be left if if uh, if the uh, the green lobby is getting uh, what they want. On Ceres, you have Plato. And Ceres means the grain, uh, the nurturing principle and agriculture. And Plato is a philosopher. So you we should have real, true philosophy in order to survive this idiocy. And on Jupiter, you have Abion, who is an Adam Cadwan figure in William Blake's mythology. And he cuts himself into four to create the four aspects of humankind. So we, yes, if we believe in it, we can still create something beautiful and new. Let's hope and that they are not destroying our own lives. There's also a complex planetary picture around 15, 16 degrees. In the London chart, it's the ascendant, descendant, uh, involving, for instance, in the Hungarian chart, it's the MCIC. And so we have slightly different configurations. This is a complex one and it's quite tight. So it, every participant is, is there. Maybe Chiron is a little bit wide, but the, the North Node is kind of bringing it in as well. There's a mystic rectangle between the Ascendant and Venus Descendant conjunction and the nodal axis with Chiron. So this gives you a balanced Thing. There's also a little tiny, tiny angel wing. Uh, so it, this could be a crib if we had another opposition here in Pisces, which we don't, So, but it would be a perfect crib uh, configuration. 
of course, there is a finger of fate with Venus, North Node, Chiron, and Lilith, uh, and, and Juno. These are all participants that were there in the um, um, full moon chart. But what's happening here is Venus. So Venus, our well-being, our harmony, our money, our security needs uh, are actually in the picture. And the apex is the Juno-Lilith conjunction. And in it, we have a bidirectional venus juno Quincunx and bidirectional quincunxes, by the definition, work as trines. Otherwise, quincunxes are very disruptive energies because they sometimes work as a trine and sometimes as a, as a square, square or opposition. And in this case, this is a bidirectional uh, quincunx because Juno is retrograde. And these are the two main uh, feminine figures, uh, two different but um, reconcilable feminine roles juno is the wife the the, uh, the first lady and venus is the lover and in this particular case you can join the two and you can behave uh, as as one or you can make them work as one there's also a, a, a platform actually two platforms if you take a look one is uh, the nodes uh, and chiron juno black moon and dark moon and the other one is uh, north node chiron juno black moon Ascendant and Dark Moon. So those are the um, those are the platforms. And platforms are are uh, very shallow uh, trapezes. A trapeze is like more like a stage, and a platform is just a soapbox that you can actually uh, put yourself onto and give your um, give your thoughts to to everyone there. And um, yeah, the one uh, it has a square. And actually, there's also a, there's also a fixed D square. I forgot to tell you. Ascendant, Descendant, Dark Moon, Lilith. And the Dark Moon, Lilith square is the, the one that is a bit difficult because it shows that uh, the curse is there if we don't actually accept uh, what we need for our harmony creating abilities. And there are some transcendental celestial objects that are quite revealing on the ascent. And here again, the, the uh, our color code is uh, purple. I forgot to put this in a purple, but here, please, is also um, um, an asteroid. Asteroids are the personal karmic level. Uh, in blue, you have the. Um, uh, and again, I forgot to. Well, I didn't put all the colors here. I, I but actually, you can see here. So uh, the blue are blues are are the um, centaurs, which are karmic wounds, and red is always uh, uh, fixed stars, which are not on the uh, not within the solar system. They are out there in the universe, and they give give us universal energies and uh, usually healing or special traits. On the ascendant, you have Atlantis and Berenike. Berenike is a, a, survive, a, a sacrifice energy, and Atlantis, of course, is Atlantis that we managed to do away with. On the descendant uh, and Venus, there is Hermes, Thetis, and Chariklo. Hermes is uh, Mercury's uh, Greek counterpart that is uh, uh, linked to um, mainly... Um, magic and and alchemy Thetis is the uh, um, the goddess of the, the ocean and Chari glow is a very um, interesting centaur she used to be a a nymph <clears throat> and when she uh, falls in love with Chiron the first centaur she turns her, herself into a fe female centaur the very first uh, female centaur in order to marry him and to bear a child with him and this uh, archetype represents complete transformation for the sake of a, lo of a loved one, for the sake of, of the spouse. And this is a very, uh, it, it gives you a very interesting balance or imbalance, actually, depending on how you utilize it. Because uh, when you transform yourself, you become someone else. Now, if you give up yourself completely, then you become actually someone else and no longer your old, old self. And sometimes this is dangerous and sometimes it gives you potential to become some totally new energy. So this, this could be quite difficult, but quite revealing and, and rewarding as, as well. On the North Node uh, Chiron uh, conjunction, you have Spartacus, Heracles and Phaeton, three strong uh, male archetypes. Spartacus is the, um, the slave who revolts. Hercules is the hero, the perfect hero, who who uh, completes 12 labors and uh, becomes a, a true hero in every sense. And Phaeton is 
the sun god's uh, Helios's uh, son who steals his uh, his chariot and of course disrupts the whole world. So Phaeton is a disruptive energy. Here, uh, Hercules is a hero, and uh, Spartacus is the revolter, someone who revolts, who someone who 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 uh, wants to break free. That's our our destiny at the moment. We're linked to our destiny. On the south node, we have Shiva, the destroyer in the Trimurti. We need to be able to destroy what is not good in order to create something new. On the Juno Black Moon, you have two um, centaurs, Orcus and Aphidas. Both are quite difficult. Aphidas is a rapist, and Orcus, who is being killed, by the way, and Orcus is the Etruscan uh, god of the underworld, who is um, who is the punisher of uh, of uh, oaths, broken oaths, and also the. Uh, uh, the, the the protector of hidden treasures, and on Dark Moon Lilith, uh, we have Nike, uh, Neptis, Athene, and and two fixed stars, Menkar and Almach, and uh, Nike is the um, um, uh, the euphoria of ex of of uh, winning of victory. Neptis is an interesting archetype, another feminine, another wife. She is the wife of Seth, and uh, when Neptis is prominent, it usually describes someone who knows that her partner is a crook or a, a an underworld figure or just a bad person, but still she is uh, standing behind him and helping him and supporting him. And Athene, of course, is the uh, the uh, goddess of wisdom. Menkar and um, Almach are uh, two uh, bright stars that um, one uh, Menkar is the um, um, it, it is at the portion uh, at the liminal space on the uh, on the zodiac where uh, the stars of Aries stop here and the stars of of uh, Taurus stop uh, start here and you have a gap you have a liminal space and set uh, the setus the the veil the celestial veil is coming up and occupying these uh, degrees and mankar is the stair of the celestial veil and it gives you insight into hidden uh, philosophical or psychic things and almach is uh, andromeda's uh, uh, gamma star and it represents the freed feminine it's a, a, a feminine archetype and there's also a complex planetary picture at uh, 24, 26 degrees. Uh, kind of the MCIC are there. It's a little bit wide because it's already almost 27 degrees, but I just included it because Aries is, and the moon is uh, uh, bringing them in. The moon uh, and the moon Aries opposition highlights on the ICMC angle, highlights uh, that our world is being disrupted, drastically altered outward circumstances, but the moon on the IC highlights and illuminates our roots. And it's very important uh, to have those roots. Learn from history. Don't allow people to distort your history, Be, dear my dear English friends. My dear American friends, you don't really have a history, but 250 years still gives you some glimpses of what happened and why. And learn from other people's history. Maybe that's what's going to, to save us. And then there is this uh, mutable engine, air engine, uh, involving the Moon, Neptune, and Vesta. And uh, uh, the uh, Vesta-Neptune uh, mutable square gives you the, the, the focus on, on anything that is hidden, and the Moon is highlighting both. And the air uh, portion of the engine gives us the, uh, the potential to think and to communicate. Then is also a dissolved square uh, with the, the Neptune Vesta square, uh, and it's actually it is dissolved by by Aries, uh, drastically altered outward circumstances, uh, and of course the mid heaven, the future. And here are the transcendental objects. Interestingly enough, uh, two of the items here, the Moon and Vesta, only have fixed stars. Vesta is currently at the, the degree 22, 24 degrees Gemini, which is the most star-studded portion of the sky. We have a lot of bright stars at the moment. Uh, Vesta is already at almost 24, 23 and a half degrees. So only five out of the eight or nine are prominent. Uh, as you can see, uh, Elnath, which is Beta Taurus, Mintaka and Al Nilam are the bad stars, so uh, uh, representing divine order, 
and capella is uh, one of the healing words of uh, suicide victims actually the one where we learn to break free of the whole horrible situation and fact is the um uh, Alpha Columba, we don't, uh, we won't see this from the uh, Northern Hemisphere. This is a Southern Hemisphere constellation, but it represents peace. And so let's focus on peace, on internal balance or universal balance, and also how to fight from the shadow, that's Elnat, and also how to break free, that's Capella. And that's uh, all on Vesta, nothing else. So nothing, these are divine energies because they are not from, not uh, uh, the stars are not from the solar system. They are out there in the universe. So it's a much higher, they represent a much higher energy. And so is the moon that has Spica and Arturus. I spoke about these two stars many, many times. They are really brilliant. Actually, Arturus is a the healing word for uh, children who were abused and died as, uh, in, uh, as an abuse. So it's a very important star. And Spica, which is the uh, uh, hand the, uh, that holds the shaft, the, uh, the wheat shaft in the Virgo constellation Virgo, is the giving energy of agriculture. So actually, you can see that this is really a decisive moment about that as well. And on, uh, I see you have Avicenna and Urania. Avicenna, even Sina, is a, a polymath uh, physician and uh, and uh, magician as well. And Urania, of course, is the uh, um, use of astrology and astronomy. On Neptune, we have Aten and Paradise. Aten is the sun disk and Paradise, of course, you know what it means. And on and the MC in the London chart, we have Pandora, uh, the, the woman who opens the, 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 the putos that keeps all the uh, problems and trials and tribulations of humans in and she opens it and allows it to, to come out. And Seneca, of course, a, uh, uh, a, a philosopher. And on Aries, you have er Eros. Uh, uh, the the create the eros is the uh, is is right there when Gaia creates herself out of the uh, celestial world void the chaos. Uh, eros is there, so uh, desire, physical desire, is what moves us in this world, and we need to understand that uh, among physical desire, there's greed as well, and uh, eros. Uh, is now on Aries, drastically altered outward circumstances. So everything is moved by greed at the moment. And by the end of the day, on the, uh, February the 18th, uh, 28th at 21.26, so it's uh, half past nine, the sun finally reaches Saturn. So that's the sun Saturn Kazemi. Although in the beginning, if you take a look at the very uh, ch the chart at the mor morning and the positions here, uh, there's the Kazemi. Kazemi is 17 minutes of an arc. So actually the sun is already in a Kazemi posi uh, position with Mercury and Saturn. But uh, the to the minute, to the second uh, exactness is uh, half past nine on the 28th in London. And that is when you have uh, this, this tight, very, very tight Kazemi. And so there's a window between the uh, afternoon and the evening where you can actually utilize the uh, the Kazemi energies. And I, I just highlighted everything else uh, in the first chart as well. The only only dif difference here in the London chart is that Dark Moon Lilith, which is the acceptance of the curse, is right at the mass not mass, sorry, uh, Uranus, uh, Jupiter uh, midpoint, and so is the vertex. <clears throat> and the vertex means uh, that you don't have free will. And um, so uh, actually this is what you may try to eliminate, uh, even uh, if this means that you need to accept the curse upon yourself. If you want the Jupiter, Uranus uh, energy to utilize, and again, Jupiter is... Uh, enlarging everything it touches and Uranus fills everything with freedom urges. So the Jupiter-Uranus aspects, and there's going to be a conjunction soon in April, uh, which is one of the main aspects of this year. Uh, and actually um, we will have a uh, uh, an interesting day uh, at the uh, Lodge, Astrological Lodge. There's going to be a karmic seminar on that day uh, with Stephen Forrest uh, and a couple of others uh, uh, so uh, if you want to, please join that, uh, that seminar. You can do it on uh, via Zoom. But then again, Uranus and Jupiter work brilliantly together usually because 
Jupiter enlarges your freedom urges, it enlarges your potentials. At the moment, Dark Moon is between them, uh, kind of at the midpoint, and so is the vertex, uh, which is uh, the point of no free will. So in the London chart, it's a ricky, rickety moment. Uh, at the same time, the, the window uh, for um, creating something solid, Saturn, wise, or at least uh, feasible, Mercury, for yourself, Sun is there and utilize it as best as you can. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.